the magnificent Himalayas, home to snow-clad mountains, mighty glaciers, holy Ganges, Indus, Brahmaputra, and a variety of bird species. Himalaya, a profoundly meaningful word in Sanskrit. Hima means snow and Alaya means abode, precisely characterizing the snow-clad mountain ranges in Asia separating the plains of India from the Tibetan plateau. One of the important geographical wonders of earth with rich alluvial soil, with more than 110 peaks raising to elevations of 24,000 feet above sea level, the Himalayas play a vital role in Indian weather and agriculture. The mesmerizing snow-clad peaks also attract many tourists and hikers with Mount Everest, the world's highest mountain range, hailed as a pursuit of mountaineers throughout the world. The Himalayas include the highest mountains in the world with Mount Everest boasting an elevation of 29,000 feet. In contrast, the highest peak outside Asia is the Andes, which is 23,000 feet tall. A common perception is that the Himalayas and the Mount Everest are the same. The actual fact is that the Himalayas is a parent range and Mount Everest is a sub-range in the Himalayas. They share a symbiotic relation like a parent and a child and for that matter all the sub-ranges of the Himalayas do. The Himalayan mountain range and the Tibetan plateau formed as a result of a collision between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate, a process which began 50 million years ago and continues even today. Geologically, the Himalayas and the Alps have a lot in common, the most visible one being the climate in these regions. As the tectonic plates impinge upon each other, the pressure could only be released upwards, contorting the collision zone. The massive pressure exerted by these plates led to formation of tall jagged peaks, which we call the Himalayas. The topology of the Himalayan range allows the air to rise on the windward side of the mountain, creating a stark contrast in the weather and rainfall pattern on the two sides of the mountain range. The air rises on the windward side, forming clouds and rain, resulting in lush green vegetation and beautiful meadows. The leeward side, where the Tibetan plateau lies, is a rain shadow region due to dry and warm air. This has a lot of bearing on the Indian weather dynamics and patterns. The Himalayas as a great climate divide affect the air and water circulations over the Indian region. The role of Himalayas in Indian meteorology is unquestionable. By virtue of its location and magnanimity, the great Himalayas obstruct the passage of cold continental air from the north into India in winter and also forces the southwesterly monsoon winds to give up most of their moisture before crossing the range. The result is heavy precipitation, both rain and snow, on the Indian side and arid conditions in Tibet. The average annual rainfall on the southern slopes varies between 1530 mm at Shimla and Missouri, which are part of the western Himalayas, and it hovers around 3050 mm at Darjeeling in the eastern Himalayas. North of the Great Himalayas, at places such as Skardu, Gilgit and Leh, in the Kashmir portion of the Indus Valley, only 75 to 150 mm of precipitation occurs. The eastern Himalayas, which are at lower latitude than the western Himalayas, are relatively warmer. When talking about the vigorous Indian monsoon, 
the mighty Himalayas have to find a mention. During the summer months, the Himalayan range act as a heat pump creating massive low pressure regions in the plains. This allows the moisture to be sucked in from the ocean in the form of a jet famously called as the Somali jet. The thermal contrast between land and sea is a basic physical mechanism that drives the atmospheric circulation and the monsoon currents. They not only aid in pulling the moisture from the ocean, the tall stretcher of these mountains also help in blocking the moisture laden winds and dumping bulk of the rain over the Indian subcontinent. Just imagine if not for the Himalayas, the monsoon dynamics would be so different with Tibet boasting lush green meadows. When the monsoon wind hits the mountains, the moisture in them falls as precipitation. Owing to the height of the Himalayan mountains, the temperature is freezing year-round, leading to rain and snow. During the winter months, the incoming western disturbances from the Mediterranean dump winter rainfall and snowfall to this region. Western disturbances are extratropical storms that move from west to east. They carry moisture from the Mediterranean Sea and bring it all the way to India crossing Afghanistan and Pakistan. As the storm moves towards the Himalayas, it gets blocked by the mighty ranges resulting in precipitation. The year-long precipitation over Himalayan ranges lead to a lot of snow cover and hence formation of glaciers that are nestled amidst these beautiful ranges. During the summer months, these glaciers partly start melting thereby forming the sources of major Indian rivers like Ganges, Indus and Brahmaputra. The rich alluvial soil deposits due to the presence of large rivers make Himalayan plains an important source of agriculture. The perennial water source enables a range of crops to be grown in this region like fruits, vegetables, tea, cardamom, pulses, oil seeds among many others. Of late, the focus has shifted from traditional cereal crops to high value cash crops farming such as fruits and vegetables. This transformation from subsistence systems to commercial agriculture poses new challenges for improving and maintaining productivity and quality. This demands a steady source of rains, flowing rivers and fertile soil to meet the ever increasing requirements. Inadequate pollination has also emerged as an issue caused primarily due to changing biodiversity. The variability in rainfall patterns, land use and land cover changes and their impact on the ecosystem are the main challenges associated with agriculture in the Himalayan regions. This calls for an intensive focus on the issue from the perspective of policy, research, development and extension. In the central Himalayas, the drop in rainfall is thought to have exacerbated forest degradation leading to more crops being devastated by wild animals, especially wild boars. As a result, income and interest in farming have declined and many young people are moving to urban areas for work. Though this is less pronounced in the more remote eastern Himalayan villages, issues including a rise in diseases which is affecting cardamom and ginger crops and prolonged dry periods have made life harder for the communities. But as the report shows, farmers in both the regions are coming up with new and old ways to improve food security, climate resilience and incomes while maintaining crop diversity. In the central Himalayas, this ranges from developing more intensive mixed cropping systems closer to homes, thereby reducing vulnerability to wild animals and creating structures to harvest rainwater runoff in order to cope up with water shortages. Himalayan glaciers are an important source of water for Indian rivers. Glaciers also help regulate the weather systems by maintaining the dry and cold temperature in that region. 
However, the anthropogenic driven climate change is causing glaciers to melt, reducing snow cover, depleting water and diminishing biodiversity. The melting has led to increased moisture thereby leading to extreme precipitation in regions that were alien to such huge rainfall. The end result is imbalance in the Himalayan ecosystem that directly impacts the Indian monsoon. No wonder the global vicious cyclone of monsoon feeding Himalayas and vice versa have become tumultuous and this is very much evident from the erratic behavior of monsoon. Climatologists have found that the Himalayan region is changing quite dramatically and it's likely to continue. The warming rate is quite high and the higher you go, the faster it warms. Mountain areas tend to warm faster than low-lying lands and so a global surface temperature increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius could mean a greater temperature increase in the mountains. And sadly, because of so many human interventional activities, much of it has already happened. The warming continues at an alarming rate and it's anybody's guess as to how it is going to impact the pristine ecosystem. Precipitation along the southern flank of the Himalayas and the Hindustan plain is strongly influenced by the monsoon trough where monsoon lows and depressions travel westward across the Himalayas. The precipitation observed over Nepal is considered partly due to these disturbances. The southwest monsoon circulation over India through the Tibetan plateau is closely related to the quasi steady thermal anti cyclone over Tibet called the Tibetan high. This high pressure cell is generated by the sensible heat supply released from active cumulus convection over the Tibetan plateau and the Himalayas. The monsoon is changing. Future projections reveal that there will be more rainfall and more erratic rainfall, which means intense rainfall as well as droughts. So that is even more problematic. A lot of rain concentrated in a short period can cause floods and droughts. During the southwest monsoon, there are periods when the monsoon trough moves northward over Nepal and precipitation over much of India decreases. This is called a break in monsoon. The monsoon first reaches the Himalayan range over Bhutan, Sikkim and eastern Nepal where it arrives the earliest and stays the longest. The eastern Himalayas consequently receives the highest total precipitation during the year, about 2638 mm, in contrast to the far west in northern Pakistan, which annually receives only 940 mm. However, this information does not exist for any reliably detailed picture of synoptic spatial and temporal patterns of monsoon precipitation over the Himalayas. Even so, there are a handful of point studies that have produced very detailed reports concerning local weather in this region. The magnificent Himalayas, home to snow-clad mountains, mighty glaciers, holy Ganges, Indus and Brahmaputra. There is so much more to the Himalayas than what meets the eye. The magnanimous mountains carry a lot of mystery with it that one video cannot do any justice. Through this video, we would have covered an equivalent of a tiny sub-range nestled in the Himalayas. We hope that this video urges you to read more about this magnificent range which is truly Asia's pride. We would like to conclude by saying that the Himalayan region has come under severe ecological damage attributed to nature's fury driven primarily by anthropogenic climate change. We are now living in an age where we are discussing about conserving the Himalayan diversity which is more a shame on the human race than pride. The power lies in our hands to conserve this beautiful gift and asset that nature has bestowed on us. Imagine a slight shift at the tectonic plates and we won't be talking about the Himalayas today. God has disposed. Now it is upon us to propose a plan to preserve this gift called the Himalayas. We hope this video would be an eye-opener, most importantly to young kids, 
who are the torch bearers for India. The future is theirs and sustainability without talking about the Himalayas is like having a gold drum without water. With that thought, this is Ramachandran Anantakrishnan signing off for MedConnect. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for instant notification and more exciting updates. Thank you.